We have an entity that can contain components. Component right now is pretty boring, pretty empty. We have this render that will throw our ship triangle on the screen. And in this video, I want to work closer to actually building an entity, a ship entity, and have the triangle somehow respond to the ship. You'll see how uh, soon. All right, I'm Control Alt L, go to the Solution Explorer, go to mygame.h. And in here, I, a part of our game, if you recall, my game is the commander-in-chief of all these other systems that we're working on building through this refactoring. The rendering system is pretty good so far. We'll come back to it for sure. But we need to, we need to add a ship to my game, and my game will command ship what to do. And the ship needs to worry about how the triangle appears on the screen. So let's do just that. I'm going to come into my game, and... I'm going to say entity, colon, colon, uh, no, it's entities, sorry, entities, colon, colon, entity, ship. And we probably should do the pound include for it. Pound include, entities, entity. So basically, every game object we create will be of type entity. These entities are the things that would essentially show up on the playing field. They could be uh, enemy characters or or player characters. There's a term you should get familiar with is PC for player character and NPC for non-player character. Non-player character obviously meaning it's not me commanding it, it's probably some AI, that sort of thing. All these game objects or these characters that are going to uh, go in our game will be of type entity and then we will just throw the bottle caps into them as need fit. But we don't have any bottle caps yet. All we have is the base foundation. So let's go back to my game and and uh, I'm going to get rid of this commented code for now. I'm going to say ship dot add component. What type of component should we add? I need something to handle the rendering of the ship. If you recall one of the bottle caps we came up with in an earlier video was rendering. All right. And then we also need something to store the positional information of the ship. I think my goal for this video is to just get the ship to move and the rendering system will place the triangle wherever the ship will be at. Well, uh, let me also add before we move on, this is the ship entity. This is one of the circles in our bottle cap game or in the... Uh, Venn diagram to be more specific. Okay, this is our ship so far. I've been doing this a while, and I know that pretty much every entity or game object that's on the playing field will have positional information. So instead of making positional a bottle cap here, I'm actually going to make it part of entity, and it's one of the few elite, like super elite, data properties that actually become a direct member of the entity class. Don't just start having heyday and throwing in things into your entity class, otherwise you're going back to an old school uh, object-oriented programming technique. So, well, it's probably not old school, but it's definitely not flexible. Okay, so here we go. We're in the entity class, and I'm just going to make it public for now. I need a vector 3 ID. I can hear you purists out there. Oh, he's going to make a public field and not to put getters and setters around it. Well, yeah, can you think of any good reason to do a getter than setter besides my object-oriented teacher told me to? Okay, I don't think my teacher told me to is, is a good enough explanation. Right? A better explanation would be uh, don't say it breaks encapsulation. Another thing you could say that would probably convince me is, well, we need to protect access to it. Well, if you protect access to it, if you have a getter and a setter, you haven't protected any access to it. Okay, well then, uh, 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 what's another one? Let me just get this typed out so I can think clearly. Math, vector, 3D, thank you, IntelliSense, for dying on me. I'll say position, one of the few elite ones. Well, we need to get her in center to protect the domain or the range or whatever you want to call it of the vector. Well, this vector can kind of go anywhere and uh, it doesn't matter how positive or negative it is. That's what we're going to do. So give me a better reason. Well, here's a, here's a better reason. What if we're threading? Okay. 
Here's something to think about. You can guard code, but you can't guard data. All right, there's a reason to add a getter and a setter. Um, if, if you want to learn about more about threading, go watch my threading videos on my playlist. But then again, I'm not sure how soon we're going to thread this, if at all. all right. So then, oh, well, what's another one? Well, if you have a getter and a setter, then uh, it's already... Uh, you're forced to use those getters and setters. So if I want to come in here and I actually have to move it to the private section up here and then do a getter and a setter because I am doing some domain checking or maybe some thread protection. Well, now I've just broken all my code base because my code base is programmed directly to this instead of saying get position, set position, that sort of thing. So anyway, uh, I'm actually going to make it public. One, because I know all those ins and outs and I hope you know all those ins and outs and and it's my game, and I'm going to do it, so there. Uh, Alright, we have position. Uh, we need to do we need to do some rendering, right? We need something to handle the rendering. So I'm going to say in Entities, New Folder, where we'll say Components. Okay, and again, there's many components that will be general. We can reuse in several games, and that'll go in the Engine project. But there's also several ones that will be very game-specific, and those will go in the, ga in the Game project. All right, but the rendering, uh, making sure the rendering happens at the ship position is pretty general. We'll put that in the in the engine project. Right click here, add class. Uh, click add, and my convention is renderer component. All right, I'm actually trying to avoid a class name, a class class name we already have a renderer and yes we have namespaces and that sort of thing but still mentally my brain doesn't work with namespaces so I'm going to say render a component and most if not all my components will end in the word component it's simply my convention thank you Visual Studio I right clicked here to say add class and you put it down here you, know, you think I would upgrade to Visual Studio 2012 in fact we probably will do that since it's 2013 I should probably move quickly. Ah, oh, look at this. Here's a header file. I need some updating. Let's see what was a hotkey I mapped to that. I think it was control K O. Boom. There you go. Oh, that was so convenient, except this is one word. So I'll put an underscore there. I did alt drag there and then did the underscore. It's one word because we copied this and pasted it in our in our macro definition. Let's go over to the compilation unit. Remove the constructors and go back to the header file and we need to pound include component remember everything is going to inherit from uh, components component because entity has several components go back and look at the entity class we have a pointer to several components so component dot h not sure why IntelliSense is not cooperating inherit publicly from component but in order to do that, I need to do a using namespace, or I am going to put this in the entities namespace because it should be in the entities namespace. Uh, control L, K, F, Control K, F, and I think we're good. So, what does a renderer component have to deal with in order to keep the ship on the screen? Remember when we built our renderer. Let's go back to, oop, didn't mean to do that. My game. Ship instance. Hey, renderer, add a renderable for that ship geometry. Hopefully you remember that from about 10, 20 videos ago. Somewhere in there. I want the ship entity to manage this renderable. Remember, ship instance is a renderable. I'll hit F12 on ship instance, and it's a renderable. If I click on renderable and hit F12 again to go to the definition, renderable has this public thing called the matrix. That is the where. It's where we render our what. Okay, with rendering, there's the where, the what, and the how. But we'll talk about the how way in the future. All right, for now, this is what I'm rendering, and this is where I'm rendering it. So all my renderer component needs to manage is where this gets rendered. Yeah, it's actually not too difficult. So the let's go back to the game, my game. When I say add component, I need to add a renderer component that 
basically somehow we'll manage the ship instance renderable. I probably should have called this ship renderable. In fact, I think I will renderable. Uh, even though it is an instance, it, it makes me feel better to say renderable and be consistent with my naming here. So that's the goal. Okay, render a component needs to handle a ship renderable. Now, there's a confession I have to make. We're on video, uh, I think this is 184. And how many times have you seen me call new throughout the series of all these videos? Hopefully you realize that I have yet to call new. I've never called new. I've never invoked the new operator. And I've done that judiciously to enhance cache coherency. Uh, there's a few issues with new, actually. It's not very cache coherent to call new a lot. What's cache coherency? I've talked about it in previous videos, but essentially we like to keep our data as close to each other part of data in RAM as possible. And if I call new, I lose control of that unless I do some sort of object pooling or memory mapping explicitly myself. And thank you, C++. I can do that. New also causes heap management. There's a runtime cost to using new and delete, and it fragments the heap. And then next thing you know, we, we, it's possible to get such a fragmented heap that when we call new, we actually have enough RAM for something, but but uh, since the f heap's so fragmented, we, we, we can't put that large object out there. So anyway, lots of issues with new I don't want to go into in this video, but I, I do want to point out that I haven't called new. And I'm tempted to call new in here. I really am. I really am. But uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to still try to avoid calling new. And I don't want you to think, oh, calling new is bad. I should do everything possible to avoid calling new. But I do think it's important to be aware of the headaches with calling new and fragmenting your heap and that sort of thing. So I, I'm tempted to say new render r -r 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 component. But I can actually get away with not doing that for a while. Okay, chances are it'll probably get messy and we'll have to do something and actually start calling new. But I think for now, oh, do I dare? That's so much cleaner to call new. Mm, I'm going to debate about this. We'll come back to it in the next video.